Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will discuss bacterial sepsis in pregnancy, the RCUG guideline 64A which was published in April 2012. First of all, we will study the definition of sepsis, severe sepsis and septic shock. Sepsis, it is defined as infection plus systemic manifestation of infection. Severe sepsis may be defined as sepsis plus sepsis induced organ dysfunction or tissue hyperperfusion. And what is septic shock? It is defined as the persistence of hyperperfusion despite adequate fluid replacement therapy. Now, which women are at risk of sepsis in pregnancy? Multiple risk factors for severe sepsis have been identified by the Confidential Inquiry into Maternal Death CEMD report. What are the risk factors for maternal sepsis in pregnancy? The list of risk factors include first of all obesity, secondly impaired glucose tolerance or diabetes, impaired immunity or immunosuppressant medications, anemia, vaginal discharge, history of pelvic infarction, history of group B streptococcal infarction, amniocentesis and other invasive procedures, cervical cerclage, prolonged spontaneous rupture of membranes, group A streptococcal infarction in close contact or in, with the family members of black and other minority ethnic group origin. Now what should prompt recognition of sepsis in the pregnant woman? First of all, all the healthcare professionals should be aware of the symptoms and sign of maternal sepsis and critical illness and of rapid potentially lethal course of severe sepsis and aseptic shock. Secondly, the suspicion of significant sepsis should trigger an urgent referral to secondary care. Thirdly, the clinical signs suggestive of sepsis include one or more of the of these signs like pyrexia, hypothermia, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypoxia, hypotension, oliguria, impaired consciousness and failure to respond to treatment. These signs including pyrexia may not always be present and are not necessarily related to the severity of sepsis. Another important point is that regular observations of all the vital signs including temperature, pulse rate, blood pressure and respiratory rate should be recorded on the modified early warning score mu chart. All the staff taking observation should have annual training in the use of mu chart. Now what clinical features are suggestive of sepsis? Those include first of all fever or rigors. Diarrhea or vomiting may be indicative of exotoxin production that is early toxin shock, early toxin shock. Rash, generalized streptococcal maculopapular or purpura fulminans. Abdominal or pelvic pain and tenderness. Offensive vaginal discharge smelly suggestive of aerobic and sanguinous is suggestive of the septococcal infarction. Another cause is productive cough and urinary symptoms. Now what are the appropriate investigations when sepsis is suspected? First of all blood culture are the key investigations and should be obtained prior to antibiotic administration. However, antibiotic treatment should be started without waiting for microbiology results. Secondly, serum lactate should be measured within 6 hours of the suspicion of severe sepsis in order to guide management. Serum lactate of more than 4 millimole per liter is indicative of tissue hyperperfusion. Any relevant imaging studies should be performed promptly in an attempt to confirm the source of infection. Now, what are the appropriate investigations when sepsis is suspected? Those include first of all the blood cultures, secondly serum lactate level, serum lactate of more than 4 millimole per liter is indicative of tissue hypoperfusion and third important investigation is that of the imaging studies. Now we will talk about the tasks to be performed within 6 hours of identification of severe sepsis. Those include first of all, obtain blood culture prior to antibiotic administration. Secondly, administer broad spectrum antibiotic within one hour of recognition of severe sepsis. Thirdly, measure serum lactate. In the event of hyperperfusion or serum lactate of more than 4 millimole per liter, 
deliver an initial minimal 20 ml per kg of crystallite or an equivalent apply vasopressor or for the hyperperfusion that is not responding to the initial fluid replacement to maintain mean arterial pressure of more than 65 millimeter of mercury in the event of persistent hyperperfusion despite fluid replacement that is septic shock and or lactate of more than 4 millimole per liter achieve a central venous pressure of more than 8 millimeter mercury achieve central oxygen saturation of more than 70 percent or mixed venous oxygen saturation of more than 65 percent now who should be involved in collaborative care of women with a sepsis if sepsis is suspected regular frequent observation should be made the use of muse chart is recommended there should be an urgent referral to the critical care team in severe or rapidly deteriorating cases and the involvement of consultant obstetrician the expert advice of consultant microbiologist or infectious disease physician should should be sought urgently when severe sepsis is suspected now what are the indications for transfer to ic those include first of all cardiovascular risk factors or indications like if we have hyperperfusion or raised serum lactate despite fluid resuscitation suggesting the need for inotropic support we need to refer the patient to icu secondly respiratory cause like pulmonary edema mechanical ventilation and for airway production we refer the patient to icu and for renal analysis and significantly decreased conscious level and in case of multi organ failure and corrected acidosis and hypothermia these are all the causes or all the indications for referral to icu now what are the commonly identified organisms including hospital acquired infection the most common organism identified in pregnant women dying from the sepsis are lansfield group a hemolytic streptococcus and e coli Secondly, mixed infection with both gram-positive and gram-negative organisms are also common, especially in chorioamnionitis. Thirdly, the coliform infection is particularly suggestive of the urinary infection, premature rupture of membranes and um, in case of the cerclage. Anaerobes such as Clostridium perfringens, the cause of the gas gangrenes, are commonly seen nowadays with the Peptostreptococcus and bacteriaid species predominantly. Now, which empirical and specific antimicrobial uh, microbial therapy should be used to treat the woman? Administration of intravenous broad-spectrum antibiotic is recommended within one hour of suspicion of severe sepsis with or without septic shock. If the genital tract sepsis is suspected, prompt early treatment with a combination of high-dose broad-spectrum IV antibiotics may be life-saving. Now, in this chart, we will study the antimicrobial choices and the limitations of antimicrobials. First of all, co -emoxiclase. It doesn't cover MRSA or pseudomonas and is concerned about an increased risk of necrotizing enterocolitis in neonates exposed to co-emoxiclave in utero. Second is that of the metronidazole, which only covers anaerobes. Third is clindamycin, which covers most of the streptococci and staphylococci, including many MRSA, and switches off exotoxin production with significantly decreased mortality, but not really excreted uh, or it is not really nephrotoxic. Next is that of the tazobactam, tazosin, peparacillin, tazobactam combination, which covers all MRSA and our renal sparing. The last one is gentamicin, which is given as a single dose of 3 to 5 mg per kg. It poses no problem in normal renal function, but if doses are to be given regularly, serum levels must be monitored. Now, what is the role of intravenous immunoglobulin? Intravenous immunoglobulin is recommended for severe invasive streptococcal or staphylococcal infection if other therapies have failed. How should the fetus be monitored and when and how should the baby be delivered? In a critically ill pregnant woman, birth of the baby may be considered if it would be beneficial to the mother or baby or to the both. A decision on the timing and the mood of the birth should be made by a senior obstetrician following discussion with the woman if her condition allows. If preterm delivery is anticipated, cautious consideration should be given to the use of antenatal corticosteroids for the fetal lung maturity in the woman with the sepsis. During the interpartum period, continuous electronic 
fetal monitoring is recommended and changes in CTG such as changes in the baseline variability or new onset deceleration must prompt assessment of the maternal mean arterial pressure, hypoxia and acidemia. Epidural or spinal anesthesia should be avoided in the woman with a severe sepsis and general anesthesia will usually be required for the cesarean section. Now, what prophylaxis should be considered for the new needs, other family members and healthcare workers? Local and national guidelines should be followed in consultation with the local healthcare protection units or lead for the communicable disease control. When a mother has been found to have invasive group A streptococcal infection in the peripartum period, the neonatologist should be informed and prophylactic antibiotic administered to the baby. Close ho household contacts of the woman with a group A streptococcal infection should be warned to seek the medical attention and the healthcare workers who have been exposed to respiratory secretion of the woman with group A streptococcal infection should be considered for antibiotic prophylaxis. Now, what infection control issues should be considered? Group A streptococcal infection or MRSA are easily transmissible via hands of healthcare workers and close contacts in the households. Local infection control guidelines should be followed for the hospital specific isolation and contact precautions. Invasive group A streptococcal infections are notified and the infection control team and the consultant for communicable diseases should be informed. Now what is the diagnostic criteria for the sepsis? That include the general variables like fever of more than 38 degrees centigrade, hypothermia with a core body temperature of less than 36 degrees centigrade, tachycardia of more than 100 beat per, beats per minute, tachypnea of more than 20 breaths per minute, impaired mental states, significant edema or positive fluid balance of more than 20 kg, 20 ml per kg over 24 hours. Hyperglycemia in the absence of diabetes, that is, plasma glucose of more than 7.7 .7 millimole per liter. The inflammatory variables include white cell counts of more than 10 cross 10 raised to power 9 per liter, white cells count of less than 4 cross 10 raised to power 9 per liter, normal white cell counts of more than 10 person in mature form, and plasma C reactive protein of more than 7 milligram per liter. Among the hemodynamic variables, we would like to include the arterial hyperperfusion, like systolic blood pressure of less than 90, mean arterial pressure of less than 70, and systolic blood pressure decreases more than 40 mm mercury. Among the tissue perfusion variables, raised serum lactate of more than 4 millimole per liter and decreased capillary refill or mottling. The organ dysfunction variables include arterial hypoxemia, oliguria, creatine of more than 44.2 micromole per liter, coagulation abnormalities, thrombocytopenia, hyperbilirubinemia, and ileus that is absence bowel sound. Next comes the staphylococcus toxic shock syndrome and the diagnostic criteria include first of all the fever of more than 39.9 degrees centigrade, rash diffuse macupapular erythroedema, Desquamation 10 to 14 days after the onset of the illness, especially palms and soles. Hyperperfusion, that is, systolic blood pressure less than 90 mm of mercury in adults. And in case of the multi system involvements, three or more of the following systems are affected. First of all, the gastrointestinal, which includes the vomiting or diarrhea, muscular, which includes severe myalgia, mucous membranes, vaginal or oropharyngeal uh, conjunctival hyperemia. The renal causes include creatinine twice the upper limit of the normal. Hepatic conditions include total bilirubin twice the upper limit of normal. The hematological criteria includes the platelets of less than 100 standards for 9 per liter and central nervous system. In that, we observe disorientation or alteration in the consciousness without focal neurological signs. Now, in case of the staphylococcal uh, toxic shock syndrome, we have two case classifications. First of all, probable, in which we have four or five clinical findings positive. The confirmed one include case with all five clinical findings positive. Next, we will study 
the important criteria for the diagnosis of streptococcal toxic shock syndrome which include first of all isolation of beta hemolytic group a streptococcus from normally sterile site like blood csf peritoneal fluid or tissue biopsy secondly non sterile site which include throat vagina and sputum second is that of the clinical um, definition is very important to know about which include the multi organ involvement and that is characterized by two important points first of all hyperperfusion hypertension plus organ dysfunctions which include two of these in the list like first of all there is renal impairment which means that we have creatinine count of more than 176 micromole per liter secondly we find coagulopathy in which the platelet count is less than 100 per cent just per 9 per liter or we have dic signs disseminated intravascular coagulation and when we have the liver involvement what we find the alt alanine transaminases and ast aspartate transaminases levels or the bilirubin levels are twice the normal upper limit of age and another important sign is that if the acute respiratory distress syndrome the patient may present with generalized erythematous macular rash which is present in 10% and that may or may not disquamate we may have the soft tissue necrosis including necrotizing fasciitis myositis or gangrene now like uh, staphylococcus toxic shock syndrome we can also classify the staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome into two types of the cases like case classification include first of all probable secondly definite the probable is the one which meets the clinical case definition the one which we discussed before plus isolation from the non sterile site and when we say it is definitive it means that it meets the clinical case definition as we discussed before plus isolation of the group a streptococcus from normally sterile site now this chart is very useful which covers antibiotic spectra for opsangaini like uh, when we talk about anaerobes like clostridia bacteria it's peptostreptococcus these sort of infections are usually covered by ampicillin comoxiclave clindamycin erythromycin and metronidazole MRSA can be covered by gentamicin or vancomycin tacoplanin linzolid and daptomycin and a little bit by erythromycin and clindamycin as, as well gram positive staphylococcus aureus which are fucloxacillin sensitive or usually covered by trimethoprim comoxiclave cefurexime clindamycin amepinam vancomycin and erythromycin group a streptococcal and group b streptococcal infections are covered by trimethoprim and ampicillin comoxiclave cefotaxime clindamycin and meropenamortazosin and uh, when we talk about the gram negative like coliform and pseudomonas bacteria these are covered by trimethoprim and to some extent by other group of antibiotics which are listed here so thank you so much that was all about bacterial infection during pregnancy the rcg guideline subscribe on obsangaini thank you so much allah hafiz